One of the key artifacts of Agile is the idea of backlog. A product's backlog is the entire list of all the features, functions, requirements, enhancements, and fixes identified as being needed to produce a product or a solution. It is one of the first things a team should have in order to start developing their products. In general, these features are broken down into user stories, and these user stories are the backbone of the product's backlog. The Agile team works together to refine user stories, to clarify them, estimate them, work on prioritization. This is crucial in order to understand the biggest value to the customer and what are the user stories that the team should work on first. Story mapping is an effective way to create a product's backlog in a visually structured way. It is an engaging activity where team and stakeholders are involved in the process of building the product's backlog. It helps in building a shared understanding, identifying gaps in the backlog, and see interdependencies. Story maps were invented by Jeff Patton to help discover requirements from a user experience point of view. It is a visual representation of the journey a customer takes with a product, including the activities and tasks they complete. A view of the steps a customer follows as he or she interacts with the product. This visualization helps the team to focus development on providing the most value to customers and their desired outcomes. Story mapping consists of ordering user stories along two independent dimensions. We arrange user activities along the horizontal axis in rough order of priority. Down the vertical axis, it represents the details of these activities. We start a story map from an overarching vision. A vision is achieved via goals. Goals are reached by completing activities. And to complete an activity, users need to perform tasks. And these tasks can be transformed into user stories. Let's look now at how to create your user story map. The first thing you want to do before starting is to frame the exercise around a common goal. This could be your product vision. Think about the what. What problem are you trying to solve? What product do you want to build? Or what feature do you want to add? Then about the who. Is there a specific user or user subset you're building for? What benefits will each of them get from what you are creating? And last, think about the why. What is the benefit to your company for building this feature or product? And what is the value added from giving this to the customer? Make sure everyone understands the vision and the goals of the use of story mapping session. Now it's time to build your backbone. Take one of your user personas. Think about the whole user journey and describe in high level the tasks or steps the user will perform from start to finish. At this level, you need to go wide, not deep, so don't get too detailed for the moment. Think about the biggest goals. Let's say we are building a product that helps people buy shoes online. At the highest level, the steps the customer will take are search a product, view product, add product to cart, create account, sign up, fill personal information, enter payment information, and confirm order. When creating your initial story map, you may want to ask real users to tell you the story of the activities and tasks they will perform step by step. Use either sticky notes to capture these details, or you may want to use digital tools also. As you look through the steps your user takes, you will start to notice some common themes. Many of these steps are probably working toward a common goal. In user story mapping, we call these activities. It is now to identify and group the activities. So in our previous example, you might group together steps like search for a product, view a product, and add product to cart under the goal select a product. We can also group create account, sign up, fill personal information under manage account, and then enter payment details and confirm order under the goal buy products. 
Now it's time to break the activities into tasks. When we started building the backbone, we were looking into going wider to get the whole user journey. Now it is time to go deeper into each activity and break it into tasks that the user will be performing. At this point, you will have to add as many tasks as you may need in every activity. Don't be afraid of writing love of them, as you will privatize them in a later step. Tasks are placed underneath the associated step and activity to make it clear what goal each one will support. At the end of this, you will have a bunch of steps posted left to right, split into tasks, taking your customer from the start to end of their journey. Your user map tells a story, but some users might do things differently or in a different order. So now, it is time to test your story map for the gaps. Take one of your other user personas and walk them through your user story map. This step will help you see if there are any missing tasks on your map. The whole team should be involved in writing the missing tasks and add it to the story map. Now that you have a big story of how your users will interact with your product, it is time to prioritize the different tasks. Within an activity or column, keep high priority ones at the top and move ones that are less important lower down. You can also create different swim lanes or sections across the story map for different levels of priority. We can have section for must have, one for should have, could have, and won't have for now. This way you can quickly see what are the tasks that are more important for your product. Now you have created your user story map, prioritized vertically with a lot of tasks that you can translate into user stories. This is the starting point for your product backlog. You should be able now to define iterations or releases of the story map. You can first think about what is the minimum viable product. This should be part of your first release. And then depending on the next priorities, you can define your second release, third one, and so on. Last but not least, keep the story map updated. This is not a one-time exercise. The use of story map is a living artifact. It should be visible to the whole team and updated with new activities whenever you see the need for it. Use it to have good conversations when sharing progress with your stakeholders and update it based on their feedback. At the end, your user story map will be filled with several tasks that you can translate into user stories and populate your product backlog. It is very important to keep the visualization of your story map safe somewhere as the product backlog will not necessarily show the user journey the same way as it is shown in the story map. Creating a user story map takes time, but it is a great opportunity to have good discussions and share understanding with real users, stakeholders, and team members. If all goes well, everyone will come out of this session with a deeper understanding of your product's vision and how it helps your users' needs. I hope this video gave you a good understanding of what the story map is. Please leave us a comment and follow us for more content. Thank you.